mic's just messing around. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Lakeshore Assembly of God. We're so glad you're here on this beautiful morning. And we're getting ready to just praise and worship God for what he has given us and the things that he has shielded us from, even that we don't see, many of which we don't see. Lord, we just want to lift up our voices, our hands, our spirits, and our willingness. Father, we ask that you would just come into this place today in a way that changes our hearts, our minds, and our perception of you. Lord, renew our hearts, renew our uh, peace of mind by the presence of your Spirit. And Lord, let us recognize that if there's any part of us that feels uncomfortable with standing up or surrendering to you, that's what raising our hands means. We're surrendering to what you want. As we bring you praise, as we go into worship, and then we go into glorify and magnify your name. If there's any part of us that's uncomfortable with that, we know that that's not us. That's a demon trying to stop us from coming closer to you. So, Lord, we just sanctify this place right now in Jesus' name. Anything that's not of you, Lord Jesus, is not welcome here. And we command it to leave and go to the abyss and never return again in Jesus' mighty name. So, Lord, in that freedom, protect us, seal us by your Holy Spirit. Every man, woman, and child in this sanctuary, in this parking lot, on this property, in Jesus' mighty name, so that we could worship you with truth and freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who can stand, would you please stand for worship? <clears throat> Break into the wild and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. When the Spirit of the Lord is Come back to communion, come back to the start. Run into wide open spaces, grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is waiting. When the Spirit of the Lord is there, it's free. Lord, it's there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of his love. For the Spirit is here, let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Yeah. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, 
For that freedom. We just give you glory and honor and power this morning, Lord. Let your power come. Lord, let your Holy Spirit move. Lord, let there be no hindrance this morning. We're going to take everything that we've thought about all week long that has bothered us and bogged us down, and we're going to lay it out at the, the, at the altar, and we're going to leave it, and the Lord is going to take care of it. So this morning, Lord... We are going to lay everything down. We're going to lay all our burdens down. We're going to lay all our worries down because worrying doesn't get us anywhere. So, Lord, we're going to lay it down this morning. And, Lord, we're going to jump in the river. We're going to jump in the river of life. That's where the Lord is moving. He's moving in the river. So let's jump into the river of life this morning in Jesus' name. Where goodness flows There is a fountain That drowns sorrows There is an ocean Deeper than fear The tide is rising, rising There is a current Staring deep inside It's overflowing From the heart of God Flood of heaven Crushing over us Alive in the river, we come alive in the river. 
up from the ground. We feel it now, we come alive in the river. 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 Break up the prison doors Set all the captives free Spring up a well Spring up a well Spring up a well in me Nothing can stop this joy We're dancing in the streets Spring up a well Spring up a well Spring up a well in me We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Oh, we come alive in the river. 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 Praise you, Lord. You know, it is amazing that God would care enough about us that he would want to send his son to die for us. That is a, a grace that we cannot really completely understand because we don't know the seriousness and the depths of what God really gave up in order to do that. We really don't have a clue. You know, anyone who has lost a child might have a little indication, but that's nowhere near what that would have been like. Separation from God, you know, we don't know what that's like. We don't know him fully because he is yet to be completely known. His revelation is continuous. He keeps opening more doors and opening more revelation into our lives, and we have to let him come in. We have to not put up walls because we're good at putting up walls. So this morning, if you have put up walls to keep places from God, you know, you're making a big mistake. That's, that's really a, a silly thing to do because God can go where he wants to. But he's a gentleman and he will let you do what you do until he says, okay, that's enough. That's enough. Now you've messed it up bad enough. So God's grace is sufficient for all of us. So this morning, if you've got walls, you need to tear them down. You need to tear them down and let the Lord move into that part of your life. That might be the most important thing you do today. Amen. Is to let God take control. Lord, take control of our lives. Lord, we don't have to give you permission, but we do. Because you have all authority and all power. That's right. Thank you. But Lord, this morning, we are going to give over to you all the things that we've been keeping secret. All those things that have been hindering us from seeing you move. From seeing you move in our lives and in the lives of our families. Right now, in Jesus' name, we're going to lay it down. And we're going to pick up that cross and we're going to carry it with you, Lord. We're going to just... Do what you tell us to do, Lord. Open doors that no man can shut. In Jesus' name, this morning, we just thank you, Lord, and give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. So if any of you have burdens you need to lay down, you need to come up, lay them down. 
don't wait. You keep waiting, and, and, and the enemy will tell you, oh, it's not that important. But it is. If it keeps you from God, it is important. In Jesus' name. Yes. We're going to anoint with oil at this time if you want to get the oil. And uh, those that want personal prayer, be anointed. Stay up around the altar if you want to be prayed with. I'm going to ask some of the prayer team members if they'd come forward and be ready to assist as well. If you just want to be anointed, go back to your seat. You may. But if you want personal prayer, stay up anywhere around the altar. And after everybody's anointed, uh, a team member will come and pray with you. Long ago, even before you made a world, you chose me. Through what Christ would do, a greater grace you gave to me. You are the source, and Jesus is the means. Long ago, even before. You made the world, you chose me Through what Christ would do, a greater grace You gave to me, you are the source And Jesus is the means Forgiveness Forgiveness Adoption To you long ago even before you made the world you chose me through what Christ would do a greater grace you gave to me you were the source the Jesus is the means Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Adoption. Acceptance. The short rest and I fall on my face and I yield. Forgiveness. Adoption. And I yield to you. I know that you want me. I know you desire my heart. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Adoption. Acceptance.
up by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. You are the fire, we are the temple. You are the voice, we are your song. You are our God, we are your people. You are the light, we stand in awe. We stand in awe of you. We stand in awe of you. Oh, not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. Not by might, not by power. By your spirit, God, send your spirit, God. You call us out, out of the darkness, into your love, into your light. Grace upon grace, beauty for ashes. You come to us, we come alive. We stand in awe of you. We stand in awe of you. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit. God, send your spirit, God, not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God, send your spirit, God, not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God, send your spirit, God. Lord, you won't let go until you have our hearts, until you have all of us. Lord, we just this morning want to make sure that we have everything that we need in order. Lord, we want to make sure that we don't have anything that's hindering us. 
No hindrance this morning. Lord, if there's an area of life where we have allowed the enemy to occupy, to influence, to move us in a, in a way that we shouldn't, Lord, right now in Jesus' name, we repent. We turn from that. And we take hold of what you have for us. Because I know in my heart and in my life, you won't stop until you have all of me. And you are no respecter of person. So what you do with me, you will do with somebody else. So this morning, have us all. Have our whole hearts, Lord. We just give you praise.
look right at you want to sing right to you i don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room want to look right at you want to sing right to you i don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room want to look right at you want to sing right to you Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's worthy. Praise you, Lord. We just give you praise. We give you praise this morning, Lord. Praise God. Yes. Yes. We give you Thank praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. We praise give you, the you praise. Lord. Hallelujah. You know, the enemy likes to use discouragement. That's one of his favorite tricks. And if he'll get you to agree with him, then you go down to a deep, dark place. And you sit there and you feel, woe is me. It is so bad. We have to look up. Yes. We have to look up. Yes. And start seeing what God has done, and it's good. Lord, thank you, Lord. Don't forget. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Give him a praise. It's Give good. Praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise, praise, you, Lord. praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. So this morning, if you are discouraged and you think things are taking too long. Just sit and wait for the Lord because your victory is around the corner. Amen. Yes. Praise you, Lord. The victory's coming. Praise you, Lord. Read the words of this song. And take courage. Slow down, take time. Breathe in, he said. He'll reveal what's to come. The thoughts in his mind always higher than mine and he'll reveal all to come take courage my heart stay steadfast my soul is in the waiting he's in the waiting hold on to your hope as your triumph unfolds he's never failing he's never failing no. The Lord's coming. Sing praise my soul. Find strength in joy. Let his words lead you on. Do not forget. His great faithfulness He'll finish all He's begun So take courage, my heart Stay steadfast, my soul He's in the waiting He's in the waiting 
hold on to your hope as your triumph unfolds. He's never failing. He's never failing. You who hold and you who hold the stars, who call them each by name, will surely keep your promise to me that I will rise and your victory. You who hold and you who hold the stars, who call them each by name, will surely keep your promise to me that I will rise and your victory. You who hold Stars. Yes, Lord, who call them each my name will surely keep your promise to me that I will rise in your victory. Take courage, take courage, my heart. Stay steadfast, my soul. Sit the weight and sit the weight. Hold on to your hope as your triumph unfolds. It's never failing. It's never failing. Miracles. Yes, we believe, Lord. We believe. Miracles happen when we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, miracles happen when we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. In the light, in the light of his face, all our questions die, all our questions fade away. In the light of his face, all our questions die. All our questions fade away. Miracles happen when we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord! Miracles happen when we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord! Miracles happen when we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Christ. You need a miracle. Miracles happen when we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. We gotta call out. Miracles happen when we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Jesus! Miracles happen when we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Miracles happen when we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Father, we give you the praise this morning. Lord, I lift up our precious sister, Kathy Johnston, had a major stroke last yesterday morning she's in cleveland and lord she may not wake up in this world but she's saved she's ready to go so god we ask for your will in her life she was just here wednesday at the bible study and lord we don't know what a day will bring i can't guarantee the next 20 minutes but thank god you guaranteed eternity yes. for us yes, in glory so god we lift her up we lift up Kelly Edmonds, who's been sick for over a week now, and praise God that many are in the sanctuary this morning that have been sick recently, and it's, it's good that your healing virtue has been applied to their lives. We give you the praise for every person here this morning. But God, touch our hearts. And Father, you know the shadows that go on in, in, our, in our hearts, and uh, that discouragement, when, when my sister talked about the discouragement, and my wife and I... We've just been going through some discouragements, and we're, we're just, we're learning that, that 
facing the realities of life is, how can I say it? When I was a younger man, every, everything in theory sounded a lot easier than it is in real life. But, Father, you are a faithful God. Yes, Lord. And, Father, in spite of our disappointments, in spite of whatever isn't yet, that waiting is real. Yes. And, Father, I want to give you the praise and I want to give you the glory that you are the God that answers. Your word is our answer. The presence of your Holy Spirit beckons us to eternity itself, O oh God. So, Lord, we thank you and praise you for this beautiful morning that you've given us, this beautiful weather that we're, we're enjoying this week, Father. We thank you for the freedom that we have yes. to wake up and to get into our cars and to come freely to the house of God yes. and give you Lord. praise this morning, God. Amen. There are countless places in this world they couldn't get up and go anywhere. They would not have the freedom to be in the house of God today. But, Lord, we still have that freedom. And as long as we have it in this country, we're going to exercise that freedom of worship. Hallelujah. And, God, we give you the praise. Have your way as the word comes forth. And, Father, we just give you the praise and glory for all that you have even in store for your church today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Give God a praise. Whew. Glory to God. Praise God. Hey, Mike, be ready, all three boards. I'll let you know which one comes first here in a minute. Amen? Hallelujah. Jeff's going to hit the buttons here. I'm afraid to touch any buttons. I don't want to blow up Russia. Remember the first time you got a computer and something started going wrong? Remember how scared you were? I'm still that way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, it's not showing the next frame next to it. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. There it is. Which one? There we go. Good. Today, how many are hungry for lunch? Okay. Today... We're going to be having youth group fundraiser in the pavilion right after the AM service. It's a donation-based fundraiser. How many are going to try to stay for that? Come on, we can do better than that. Hallelujah. How many are staying for the fundraiser? Good. Two hands. Good. Good. Debbie, put two hands up. All right. Amen. Amen. You know why Pentecostal and Baptist preachers are never hired as, uh, as lifeguards? So every time somebody's drowning, they go, I see that hand. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> That's why I'm not going to be a lifeguard, man. Okay, Wednesday morning, we have a beautiful verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Romans from 11 to 12.30 Wednesday night, back by popular demand, chicken pot pie for the men's group. Hallelujah. And we're also going to be having Joe Martin, our missionary, one of our missionaries we support, to come back and minister to the men's group. Also, next Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, our Outreach Car Club will be meeting for the second time this year. This is not the big car show at the end of the month. This is the mini one, but the last mini one, how mini was it? Wasn't that mini? So the second car show of the year is coming, and that's going to be Tuesday, June 13th, 5 p.m. dinner, about 5.35, okay? And uh, we need help with everything. And if you're going to help with the car shows for the big shows, come to this one and get your feet wet. But whatever's happening at this show, it's only half of what's going to happen at the end of the month. And we'll tell you about that later. Sign-up sheets are coming off, so the clothing outreach is coming. we got a lot of exciting things happening this month. Friday, June 23rd, and Saturday, June 24th, uh, the sign-up sheets are there. Please, we need people to come during the week. The totes and the clothes will already be in the room, but you just have to take them out of the totes, put them on the tables. I don't think anybody has signed up to help during the week, so on, check the menu out. There's a lot of uh, options there. Check that out so the sign-up sheets are coming. Also, Father's Day, June 18th, we're going to be having a water baptism. If there is anybody here, you've accepted Christ as your Savior, but you have never been baptized in water, we're going to be having a water baptism in the AM service. Teen Challenge is also going to be here with us. 
if you, you or someone you know has truly come to Christ and they have never been baptized in water, this is going to be uh, the Sunday for them, okay? Also, Target. And you guys know what's going on. How many know what's going on with Target? It is not just Target. Sadly, it's Kohl's. Virtually every department store is in on this. But here's what's happening with Target. They are targeting kids. If, if you simply look on the Internet at the stuff, infants, babies, little children, little two, three-year-olds wearing a shirt that says, I am queer. Queer kids... If, if it was just for adults, but go, guys, this is evangelism. This is no longer supplying something to adults that have made a decision to be that way. They are after our kids. Now, I'm not telling you not to shop at Target. My wife and I are never going to step in the store again. If we can help it. Amen. Last year... They gave $2.1 million to the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Educational Network. You know what that is? It teaches school systems how to keep secret, keeping the secret gender identity of kids from the parents. They do workshops with public schools on how to keep the gender-affirming stuff that they're teaching children in elementary schools from their parents. Target gave $2.1 million last year. And one of the big shots at Target is the executive director of GLSEN. Google it. Check it out. You'll see what I'm telling you is straight. I've checked it out. It's disgusting. America is becoming Sodom and Gomorrah. And even the people in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would be amazed at the depravity that's happening now. I think, I think they, there are things that are happening now that even the people in Sodom and Gomorrah wouldn't, wouldn't have voted for. I'm telling you right now. So we got a lot of work to do in prayer, don't we, for our nation. All right, guys, we're going to continue with After the Resurrection, Part 6. The book of Acts. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Acts, the second chapter. Great days in the history. Did, did you know that, in my opinion, I believe that the church... The founding of the church, when I say founding, the day of Pentecost in, in the Bible is technically the first day of the New Testament church as, as we understand that it was going to become. The explosion that happened in the upper room with 120 people being filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire, hallelujah, when they came out of that upper room. And we need to remember what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 17, and 18. When Jesus replied, and this was after he asked the apostles, who do men say that I am? And today, my friends, that is still one of the most important questions that can be answered. Who is Jesus? Because with the way the world is going now, the idea that Jesus Christ is really the Son of God, that he's really the, the, the Savior of the world, that he is really the way, the truth, and the life, that is becoming very exclusive in our culture, but it is still necessary that we believe the truth. Amen? You know, it doesn't matter if everybody around you doesn't want to believe. That doesn't change the reality that you need to believe and they need to believe. So people need to get saved just as much now as ever. What's sad is, is that the, the, because of the school systems and uh, we, we have universities by the countless dozens that will not even permit conservative or Christian speakers on the campus. You know, if, if you think about it, Harvard, Duke, um, what's some of the other main ones? Princeton. Did you know they all started to be seminaries? Did you know that? They were seminaries. Look how far they've come. Now somebody who believes in the authority of Scripture. People are losing their jobs because they say that I believe that a boy is only a boy or a man is only a man and a woman is only a woman. People are losing their jobs in the government as I speak if they publicly pronounce something that obvious. These are the end times. And the church is needed more than ever. And Jesus said, after they, they replied, you are the son of God, you are the savior, the son of the world, to whom else shall we go? 
Jesus then said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. Hallelujah. Amen. And whether they like it or not, the gates of hell cannot overcome the true church. You see, whether we, we meet here or whether someday we have to meet in homes or meet secretly, the church is the church. The church is an organism. It's not an organization. Hallelujah. While we are able to freely organize, we will. But someday maybe that will be robbed from us. Someday that may be taken away from us. I'm not saying it will be in my lifetime. But there's a lot of things that I thought I wouldn't see. I thought I'd be dead and buried and gone. I'd be in heaven by now to see what I see happening in our world. And I was wrong. I've seen stuff that I never imagined could take place. So could we lose our freedoms? I don't know. I know this, that if everybody in America that says they believe in Jesus Christ got their butts out of, out of bed every Sunday morning, went to church, you see, you exercise a muscle that's weak. Hallelujah. In America, we need to exercise that muscle of worship. Hallelujah. We need to make that a value more than, than taking the kids to soccer practice or something else on the Lord's Day. We still need to be in church. And the church... Jesus died so that the church would have that victory, hallelujah. The miracles that take place in our midst, in our lives, collectively we are here together because the Lord is doing a mighty work. Now in Acts 12, 1 through 13, we see that after the Holy Spirit was poured out, that they came out of the upper room and they were speaking, 120 people were speaking in a divine tongue. And when I say divine, the Bible shows us that at least 15 languages were spoken. It's believed that there were actually more than that. But, but these are specifically the ones that are listed in Scripture. And, and they were all amazed because people are confused. There were thousands there for the feast. So when they came out of the upper room and they began to, they were just ecstatically shouting in, in their tongues. And they had no idea what they were saying. Because you see, a true, when somebody truly speaks in tongues, it is something God is giving them. I remember uh, one of the coolest stories. I read this in the Pentecostal Evangel. Uh, and it was a, a guy from America, from Ohio. He was somewhere in Africa. And he was in a restaurant. And he, he uh, heard somebody, uh, he saw somebody uh, another white man, he was, he was in a, this, this, this black area of Nigeria, and he was in this restaurant, and there was a white guy in there, and, and he heard him speaking in English, so he goes up to him, and he says, where are you from? So he's from the States, and he said, I'm a missionary here, and I have a church about three and a half miles out, and he said, you know, we don't speak English in the service, but would you like to come Sunday? And the guy goes, yeah, I'd like to come. And the most amazing thing happened. This guy who wasn't saved from Ohio went to this church service. And right in the middle of the service, one of the native ladies stood up and spoke in tongues. And guess what the tongue was? It was in perfect English. And when his service was over, he ran up to her to talk to her because he thought she, she was another American. And she couldn't understand a word he was saying. Wow. Is that cool or what? And he went to the pastor, he goes, what happened here? And he explained to him. He said, tongues are a sign, not for those that believe, but for those that don't. And he witnessed to him, and that guy from Ohio got saved. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> tongues, aren't prob tongues are not problem. Okay? And, and the tongue is a problem, according to the book of James. And we know what we're talking about there. Amen. Okay, when you say, well, I don't believe in tongues. Well, you, you might be speaking in tongues that shouldn't be spoken. Okay, might be English too. Hallelujah. So we'll go there some, some other time. Amazed, perplexed, some thought they were drunk. Now, can I ask you in a, like a common sense way? When people get really drunk, I've been around drunks. My dad was an alcoholic and I, I've been around drunks and the drunker they get, the less that they're able to speak perfectly in 15 languages that they never learned. Usually when they talk, you understand less. You don't understand more. But they just wanted, they just, they had no idea what was going on. Some thought they were drunk. But something amazing is happening. Look in Acts 2.14. Because after that whole thing happened, 
And there was all this confusion. People didn't know what was going on in Acts 2.14. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Hallelujah. Praise God. Peter, of all people, Peter stood up. Praise God. And with his voice, he addressed the crowd. And he begins to preach this amazing sermon. And we're not going to go through it today, but you can, at home, if you want, read it. And, and because this is the first sermon, in essence, of the New Testament church, the New Testament era, in, in a sense that Jesus has already risen from the dead. Now he's empowered his posse with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They've come out of the upper room ready for battle. Hallelujah. Ready to arrest people in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, if you got saved, you were arrested. Hallelujah. There, there, was, there was the Holy Spirit was after you. Hallelujah. You could now run the law of God. Hallelujah. In that sense. Praise God. Peter. And we got to remember something. Let's go back to Luke 22, 59 to 62. About an hour later, someone asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, man, I do not know what you are talking about. And just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The, as the Lord had spoken to him, before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Wow. That is one of the saddest verses. Here's a guy that, he's got all this vim and vigor. He's triple A personality He's got ADD, DDS, who knows what else he's got, okay. Peter had issues. But, but he, at least, he would, he would do things that others would. You see, imp, being impulsive is both a bad thing and a really good thing because sometimes people need to be impulsive or nothing gets done. Amen? And when Jesus was walking in the water, the other 11, they, they're not stepping out, but Peter... He's ready to step out. And he's on his way to Jesus. And of course, he notices the storm. And isn't that what we do? We start out in some faith area of our life, right? And then we see the storm. And the funny thing is, you don't see wind. You just experience it, right? So wind is invisible in that sense, unless you're in California, certain parts of California, or or. or, or um, Kansas when there's a tornado and it's picking up dust. But, but a, a gust of wind can come. You don't know where it comes from. You don't know where it's going. And that's what the Bible says. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. There's times you're, you're in the middle of somewhere and all of a sudden you, 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 you sense the presence of God. Hallelujah. You sense the presence of God out of nowhere. And in a way, it's like that wind. You don't see where it came from. You don't know where it's going. But praise God when that wind hits. And he went out and he wept bitterly. And what's cool is, Peter goes from this to this. Hallelujah. In about six weeks. Hallelujah. Because it was about six weeks, 50 days after the resurrection. Jesus ascends. Then they wait 10 days or 40 days and then 10 days. So it's, it's a little over 50 days. So from denial to declaration, hallelujah. From sorrow to sanctification. From shame and blame to boldly confessing his name. Hallelujah. You see, that's the change that God can do in our lives. So no matter how bad it is today, you do not know what God has in store for you tomorrow. Hallelujah. And we need to lean towards the hope that is in Christ Jesus. Because all of us, too, at a certain time and place, we are all miserable. The world is miserable. The world is fallen. I know several people that work in emergency rooms. And they contact me almost every other day. Every single day, an elementary kid is coming into one of our either, uh, I won't name the hospitals, but they come into hospitals in our area attempting suicide. Every single day, there is not somebody 12 and under that is not brought to an emergency room that is not attempting or attempted suicide. Every single day. The mental illness it's, it's up like 70, 80% across the board in emergency rooms. Emergency rooms, they need five times the security that they had just two, three years ago. Constant security, because we never know when people are going to blast off. 
You see, we got rid of God out of the schools a few generations ago. And, and finally, we're finding out what America is like without God. Finally. We wondered when it would happen. It's happening now. It's happening now. We got men that wear skirts in our, in our, in our government. We've got people that, we got men that think they can have babies. We got women who think they're men. And we, sadly, we have, we have children and teenagers that think they're either a boy or a girl. Or both. This is how far we've come. And we're going to be the haters because we still believe that boys are boys and girls are girls. We still believe the Bible. I believe that God created you the way you is. If you're confused, ask your doctor, ask mom, or look in the mirror. There's an easy way for you to understand what you are. And I'm not being cruel. I'm being, we're just being straight here. We live in a time where people, they're out of their minds. I just read in the paper, what country was it where the guy just married himself? <laughs> We're laughing, folks, but this is becoming a right now. This is the next level of rights. People will legally marry. Does anybody know what country that was? I can't remember. No, there is a country that they are going to let people get married to themselves. They identify as married by themselves. Yeah. There's several countries that are already working on this. And, and I know we joke around because I know some people want to get married to themselves because you're the only one that likes you. <laughs> I understand. Okay, that can happen. But do you understand legally we are falling off a cliff? And we need to understand Peter... He fell off this cliff of discouragement. He denied Christ three times. He told Christ he never would. He said, I'll die for you. He cut off Malchus's ear trying to prove that I'm good for it. What does Christ do? He heals the ear, puts it back on Malchus, and then rebukes Peter. So Peter is trying to give his life for Christ. And I love saying this. Peter wanted to die like a Middle East terrorist that night. Christ wouldn't let him. He gave him a life sentence. You see, the easiest thing in the world for you might be to just, Lord, I just want to give up and I just want to go out in a blaze of glory. And that's, that's exactly what Peter wasn't allowed to do. So you can say, Lord, I'll give my life for you. You know what? If you can't live the next 15 days for the Lord, forget about giving your life tonight. Peter wanted it to be over. Christ was telling Peter, no, you're about to begin. Isn't that true? Sometimes you think, I'm over. I'm over this. No, maybe it's the new beginning. Acts 2, 15 and 16. Let's go there. Acts 2, 15 and 16. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only 9 in the morning. Okay? No. This is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine. Okay, so this was spoken of by the prophet Joel. So the prophecy that Joel gave in 228 and 29, actually 217 and 18, let's look at it. In the last days, God says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on who? All people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men, your men will see visions. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Whether you like it or not, God is pouring his spirit out on all people. When you go into a deli and there's a Muslim or an Indian behind that counter, whether you like it or not, God is pouring out his spirit upon all people. If you've got some place somewhere in the world that you don't like and you say, I'd never go there, you need to understand that just because you don't want to go somewhere, that don't mean God is, hasn't already gone there. Hallelujah. God, he puts it in the heart of men and women to take the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ to anywhere and everywhere. Hallelujah. That is why we respect uh, the apostolic ministry, uh, I believe, of missionaries because they go where you won't go. They'll put up 
the, 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 the giving up all the security and the comfort of home to go places that you don't even want to look for on a map. But God, in his mercy, has been looking before the foundations of the world. We cannot take pride in the reality that our, our nation is free or has been free in Christianity. You cannot take pride in that. I believe in America first, but I believe in the kingdom of God ahead of that. Hallelujah. When it comes to the nations of the world, I'm American first. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, we're all on equal footing, whether you like it or not. We're not better than anybody. We simply, thank God, had founding fathers that had enough brains to trust the word of God and to trust the gospel of Jesus Christ ahead of us. Amen? The fact that some kids are growing up, millions of them in countries, to where that's not a reality. Do not hold that against those children that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we have to work on our prejudices that we have because they're, they're, they're demonic in that sense. You're holding back the kingdom of God. Don't hold back the kingdom of God. He will pour out his spirit upon all people, whether you like it or not. He's calling men, women, and children throughout this planet to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is Explo, 1972 in Dallas, Texas, when about 150,000 Christians invaded uh, Dallas. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I just got saved in 71. I remember when that took place, and I, and I was not allowed to be a hippie. My dad said, <laughs> my dad at the time, my dad was, was old school. And he said, you know, you come home with rings in places they shouldn't be and, and long hair and, and, and everything else, you know, you're going to lose the keys I gave you for the pickup truck. You, you know what I mean? He let me know you're, you're not going to become a hippie. But praise God for the hippies that got saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And we need a revival all over again. Our young people, we need a revival of the Holy Spirit. I'll pour out my spirit on all people. And, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Prophets will no longer just be men. It'll be women too. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, and in 1, 2, 13, and 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, study it. Start from, stop looking at the division of the chapters and the verses and just read it. Just read it with that flow. And you'll see that God gives instruction about pouring out his Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, in the, not now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So God is pouring out his Holy Spirit in the last days. God wants there to be more of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in operation in our lives, both individually and corporately. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So God is pouring out his Spirit and so that whether we like it or not, God uses people that at one time could not be used. And you need to understand how radical the teachings and this experience of the Spirit of Jesus Christ is to, to, to that time frame of history. How radical it must have been for those Jews that have grown up in such a <clears throat> sectarian and such a male-dominated environment. And it is not that, that men wouldn't still be, have that lead because biblically, yes, they do. But God, when he pours out his Holy Ghost, I, I, I use it this way. It's kind of like God has a pipe and he's trying to get the water to the body of Christ. And whether you like it or not, all of you kind of have a, a little mini pipe that can go to that pipe. And when the spirit begins to move, he's waiting for somebody to open their pipe and, and, and to flow. Whether you like it or not, he's going to use some different people. He's going to use people that you may think shouldn't be used. He's used me in the gifts of the spirit. Trust me, there's some people somewhere thought I shouldn't be used. So you need to understand that God's going to use what he can use. And I'm fascinated by people that are against people being used in the gift of the Spirit. But you're not willing to be used in the gift of the Spirit. You're not willing to prophesy. You're not willing to give a message. You're not willing to testify. You're not willing to pray in faith. You're not willing to do anything except complain. Whew. This is, this is going to be on TV. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be a YouTube pastor. Okay, praise the Lord. All right. And then your men will see visions. Your young men will see visions. Hallelujah. And your old men will dream dreams, but visions. And I was thinking about visions and dreams, dreams and visions. And I was thinking about in my own life 
how I remember when God, virtually everything that I've done in my ministry has come out of technically vision. Technically vision. I had a vision of pastoring this church years before I was able to become the pastor of this church. When we were talking about waiting on the Lord, I remember in the summer of 91, I became the senior pastor in 91. In the summer of 91, I was working at Brenner Funeral Home. I was painting. They used to have houses in the part, the back parking lot used to be houses, rental houses. And I was painting a door area and spackling and doing stuff around the windows. And and, and at that moment, at that time, I di- and I did not know this, but I found out later, that there was a meeting of the, the, the committee, like the church board at that time, and they voted zero to four to give me a chance to pastor this church. All four men said no to our presbyter. So he said, okay, I'm going to get some files and I'll be back in a few weeks. Around that same exact time, I remember breaking down because I knew I had a vision for this church. And I remember just putting my hands up against the door and just weeping and asking God, God, if it's your will, please give me a chance. Two weeks later, they had another meeting and all four men came back and all four men in that two weeks period had an experience with God. One guy, he was a carpenter, he was on top of a house. And he said, the Lord spoke to me. It was almost audible and said, you got to give Jim a chance. Another guy who was mowing a lawn and he said, the Lord spoke to him and said, you got to. So when they came back together, the guy came with the files of other guys that could become a pastor of this church. And they said, we have to tell you what happened to us. And all four men shared their testimony. I did not know that till after I became the pastor in September. That was in, that was in June or July of 91. I had to wait on the Lord. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy because I knew that God put something in my heart to do. The vision for motorsports came. The vision for the coffee house. I, I, I literally had a vision in, in, in my mind of seeing uh, 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 over 100 people jam-packed in our fellowship hall for a coffee house. And At the same time that I was at one end of the altar, uh, on, on the other end of the altar was Steve Sawchak, Pastor Steve. Uh, who, who then left our church to plant the church in Chesterton. And, and unbeknownst to me, he was on the other end of the altar praying, and he had the same vision I had. And we got up, our eyes were like basketballs, and when we met in the middle, we were all shocked to see that the Lord had shown us the same thing. God gave, gave me a vision for the motorsports ministry. I, I remember waking up one night and, 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 and with the Mustang Club, and I remember waking Lisa up. I said, Lisa, I believe someday there's going to be over 100 people in our club. And, and believe it or not, the last three times our Mustang Club has met, we've had over 100 people on this parking lot. Now, they're not all saved yet, but they're here. Hallelujah. So every time somebody comes to the car show, you, you may think it's a hobby, but to, to me, it's souls. Hallelujah. This is, this is my excuse to, to influence them towards the gospel. It's your excuse to influence them towards the gospel as well. So when people say, well, I don't like cars. Well, if you love people, I don't like clothing. I don't like clothing either. My goodness, you want to see me freak out, just let Lisa take me to the mall and walk in a store. I nearly faint. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, here's a seat. Here, sit down. I can't stand clothing, but I'm going to be at that clothing ministry because I love people. It's not about the cars. It's not about the, the stupid clothes. It's about people. So you don't do something you like. You do something you need to do because you love people. Amen. Whew. Lisa always tells me, you need to explain that. I don't think everybody in the church understands. It's not just cars. It's souls. And God is bringing hundreds and hundreds of people around us. Praise God. Dreams. Dreams. Even, oh, church planning. I, when I had the vision on Route 71 with Steve Sawcheck, we, we were on our way home from Columbus. We just went to a minister's meeting. And on our way home, he and I both had a vision that was so powerful we had to get off the highway. He was driving little ugly Dodge Colt, I remember, okay? Four-cylinder, really, piece of junk, okay? Don't get mad at me, Mopar people, hallelujah, okay? 
If you're a Mopar guy, you know that I'm, what I'm saying is true. Ford Pinto, they're not any good either, okay? So they're, okay. So you had two of them? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Amen. So I, we had this vision so powerful. And I did, it was, it was what, 18 years later, I'm sitting in my office talking with Steve on the phone and Steve, he said something and I shot up like a bullet from my seat and I realized that God, sh he showed me then, you just came into the church right around then, he showed me that we're going to plant churches, we're going to plant churches and we planted two, we've been instrumental in seven, eight others in the area, hallelujah. Those have all come through dreams, for me, visions, I've never had a dream that led in that direction, I've always had awake visions. Hallelujah. Everybody's different. It, it, and more than dreams. We just saw that the last few weeks. Muslims, by the tens, maybe hundreds of thousands are coming to Christ in countries where there's no, there's no chance for them to hear the gospel. Because you see, God is finding people. If you seek, you'll find. If somebody's hungry, they're going to be fed. And if God can't get a missionary there, he's going to send a dream. Hallelujah. He's going to give a vision in the middle of the night. Somebody goes to bed seeking for the true God, and they wake up born again and filled with the Spirit. Whew. Man, there's some cool stuff happening in the world. I wish more of it was happening around here, but thank God that this is happening in the world. Acts 2.37, worship team, if you'll come back. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart after he preached a sermon. And he, he just, he let them know, guys, you are the ones that put Christ on the cross. And did you know, every single one of you here, you put Christ on the cross. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Because of our sin, it took someone without sin to cleanse the sin that is. Amen? You know, if, if, you, if you want it done right, you got to get the best man for the job. Amen? And there's nobody like Jesus without sin. And yet he took the sin of the world upon his shoulders. He bore the infirmity of the weak. He suffered the cat of nine tails on his back. His back torn apart so that we could be healed. Hallelujah. He suffered for us. And they said to the apostles and Peter, Brothers, what shall we do? Because the Bible says they were cut to the heart. They were under conviction of the Holy Spirit. God, help us if we stop being convicted by the Holy Spirit. When you get to the point where nothing really bothers you anymore when it comes to your conscience, you better, you better run for cover because I'm telling you, when you lose the capacity to hurt for the sin and the things that you're doing and doing, it's not just wrong. It's, it's that rebellion, that times and places in our walk. If you say, I've never backslid, you're lying to me because we all have backslid at times. I'm not saying you backslid a lot. I'm not saying you go real far. But there are times in certain areas of your life, we all, men especially, we know how to compartmentalize things. Women are not as good at that, but men are really good at that. So you can be really good at this, 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 but this compartment over here, that's something, it's like you're going to do something like God doesn't see it. Trust me, he sees. We need to be aware of being cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart because they realized, oh my goodness, if Jesus is really the Savior, we need, we need this. What shall we do? Hallelujah. And then Acts 2, 38 and 39, let's stand. Peter replied, Repent! And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you, your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Is God still calling people to be saved? Yes! Hallelujah! As never before, while I've spoken today, thousands of people all over the world have come to Christ. Every second, there might be hundreds that are coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Churches are growing so fast in the African continent, they can't keep track. Three churches a day at least have been planted for the last five years. They said that at the rate that people are getting saved in Africa, that by 2050, half of the people in Africa could be born again of the Spirit, if it keeps up at this rate. 
There's, there's so much going on. Our, our, the, the assemblies of God, we're only one denomination. We're only one movement. They can't keep track of what is going on. Hallelujah. They start some little village church, and then they take over. the, And they're in soccer stadiums in months. Because you see, they've never heard the word of God the way you've heard it all your life. They're starving for the truth. We need to get hungrier for the truth. We need to taste of the Lord and see that he is good all over again. Hallelujah. We need to repent. We need to turn from our wicked way. All of us have things in our conscience. All of us. All of us have things. And I know there are certain things that, that you say, well, this is simply the way I am. Well, I, I, I agree because there's things about me I don't like too. But you know what? I'm still going to really try to grind this out. And I want to see more Jesus than I do sometimes in myself. And my prayer is that you will do not give up that fight. Because when you give up the fight in one area, trust me, the enemy will come for something else. Amen? Isn't that true? When you give up the fight in a certain area of holiness, boy, do you notice how, oh, man, all of a sudden there's like two, three other things that you notice you're doing more wrong or you're, you're being more disobedient. And then after a while, you lose that, that hunger for Christ. You lose that, that, that where, you, well, coming to church, I really don't like going to church. You know, it's just kind of boring. Pastor Jimmy preaches too long. And, you know, sometimes he says really dumb things. Yeah, okay, fine. But, you know, I'm not, if I'm, if I'm the center of your world, you got a problem. If I'm the center of your Christianity, you are really in bad shape. If you don't, if you got to come here for Jesus, you got to worship the Lord. Stop worrying about what song selection is. Stop worrying about this, that, and the next thing. Don't worry about Mrs. McGillicuddy, what she's wearing today. You close your eyes, put your hands up in the air, and give God the praise, because that's why you're here. This is the church, okay? This is the church. The, 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 the country club is next door. This is God's house. Hallelujah. I don't care what you got on. I don't care what you were. I, I, don't, I don't care. I just want you here to worship God and to know him. Now, if there's some area of your life you got to clean up a little, okay, but understand what I'm saying. Okay? You, you're, you're not here from so, Sears and Roebuck's catalog, okay? Only the old people can appreciate what I just said. Okay, repent. Amen. And be baptized. Be baptized. A few weeks, we're going to have a baptism service. If you've accepted Christ and you've never been baptized, you need to go in those waters. You need to go in those waters. It's one of the first things in the Bible, in the New Testament, the Bible says that if you've truly put your faith in Christ, you need to re not only repent, but then be baptized. Hallelujah. And then the Holy Spirit. Get more of that Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Patty, before we close, let's sing a song. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, Praise God. we need you. Amen. If anybody wants to come around the altar, why don't you come, some of you, and let's just close in worshiping the Lord with this song. Hallelujah. Come on down. Come on down. nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare your sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are
my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and praise we give you the glory this morning and God is our the Bible says lift holy hands without wrath and doubting so God as our hands are raised I, I remember those westerns <laughs> and whenever someone got arrested the hands went up Lord arrest us <laughs> arrest us hallelujah may we become captive of your presence and your power and your goodness and your mercy and your love and your forgiveness and your purpose, God. Yes. Arrest us this morning in Jesus' precious name. Father, we give you the praise and we give you the glory for this morning. We thank you and praise you. Father, send us out into the highways and hedges that we may compel them even to come in. But God, come into us. Fill us to overflowing with your presence. Help us, God, to make that commitment even today as we walk out of these doors, Lord, to have more of you in our lives.
to be cognizant and conscious, Lord, to, for our consciences, Lord, to be pricked by your Holy Spirit. Lord, let us yield and, and submit and, and let, us, let us give over to you those things in our lives, Lord, that, that deep down in our hearts we don't even want anymore. So God, set us free in the name of Jesus Christ. Be our deliverer, God. Be our Savior and be our Lord. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Praise God. Give God a praise. Amen. Woo. Glory to God. Praise God. Father, bless the food out there as the youth are going to be serving us a, a good uh, burger and hot dog. Bless our youth group. Bless the workers. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we go out there and have a great time of fellowship in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise God. If you don't have to go, please stay. Go to the pavilion. We're going to have lunch together.